Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Wildy Garden. And in this video, I would like to talk to you about my all-time favourite non-native herbaceous perennial. Now, non-native versus native, I think people get a bit hung up on. It's a topic for another day, but today, my favourite non-native herbaceous perennial in the entire world is this fabulous stuff, which is, of course, Verbena bonariensis, which no doubt, if you've been following the channel for a while, You'll have been hearing me badger on about all the time. It's just, or bang on about, it's just incredible. I've clocked over 17 species of butterfly just here in the UK, nectaring on this plant, uh, along with, or including, many of these small whites, green vein whites, and large whites that are all over this wonderful plant today. And also there's been a, I couldn't quite, as is always the case, I couldn't quite get my camera out in time to film the hummingbird hawk moth which was having a drink on this stuff a little while ago which is obviously a wonderful site and migratory moth species from the continent from the mediterranean which comes over to the uk every year now it's also known as purple vervain argentinian vervain south american vervain and it originates from south america but i absolutely love it and it's just an awesome splash of colour in any garden at this time of year. Now it's the beginning of September but this thing has been flowering since the end of June and it will continue to flower until November. So I personally cannot think of another plant that I know of in a garden setting or in the UK in fact that will flower apart from maybe gorse which has kind of frequent flowering uh, sprees throughout the year that has such a prolonged period of nectar uh, available for so many pollinating insects and it's not just butterflies and moths that use this stuff it's covered in bees all over the place at the moment it really is and i'll obviously be putting a few clips over the top of this so you can see it's such an incredible plant what i also love about it is when i'm designing a lot of the herbaceous borders that i design for the wildlife gardens that i installed around the uk i could almost put this plant anywhere so it might go in with some echinaceas, some nepetas, salvias, all sorts of wonderful plants in their own right. But this stuff, you could almost put it at the front of a border, middle of a border, or back of a border, and you can sort of see through it. So it's very kind of transparent, which makes it a great plant for kind of anywhere it pops up in the border. And I've, there's even some right down the front of this border which have self-seeded from the original plants behind me. So it really does create a wonderful block and it will spread through the garden um, not invasively and not to any huge numbers but it will create these wonderful clumps um, it's quite a sort of a mid mid to short to mid-term perennial I would say so you will get a good sort of two to five years out of a single plant so really really good and then of course the successional plants that are dropped by the seeds of these plants will grow and germinate to create kind of a perpetual clump of this brilliant perennial plant. Now, as I say, I've recorded about 17 species of butterfly on this plant alone, which is right up there with Buddleia as well. Buddleia, obviously a non-native shrub here in the UK. I know it's classed as invasive in different countries around the world, but Buddleia, another great one. And actually, when you look at it closely, when you look at the flowers, when you compare them, the flowers of a Buddleia to the flowers of a Verbena, they are very, very similar, which I think is a big reason as to why these plants are very attractive along with the buddleias of course which are equally as, tra as attractive and also known as the butterfly bush. Now this plant itself will grow in many conditions but it prefers um, moist but well-drained soils if you can so kind of sandy soils I mean it'll even grow I've seen it self-seed through gravel areas it'll grow literally just in gravel or shingle um, where it can just get its toes in it's very 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 good at dealing with hot temperatures or heat i mean for example here in the uk we've had 40 degrees um, recorded here for the first time ever in history this year and this stuff that's not bothered is it let's be honest <laughs> so it's absolutely thriving and it will do very well in hot dry conditions so it really is a wonderful plant if you're planting to try and future proof your garden for any increases in temperature any likely hot summers that we are well yeah likely to get i think moving forward so it really is a cracking plant for that so well-drained soils it does very well and it'll almost grow in sand you know um it'll do okay in clay but it prefers well-drained soils if it can but as long as they're a bit moist but again even if they're not it will do very well in sandy conditions 
and I absolutely love it because it has a very rigid stem. So it's uh, it's not one of these plants like a lot of plants we see where when they flower, the tops get heavy, they start to sort of sag over a bit. We have to support them, things like the peters and that they can sort of splay out a bit. Whereas the verbena bonariensis has a very rigid, rigid stem. So it's very good at obviously keeping its structure and just, well, having a very elegant posture I think and a, a certain stature about it which I just absolutely love so it really is a cracking plant and one that I would certainly never consider making a garden without including in the plant list that's for sure um, I've seen it in meadows as well I've you know there's, there's a client that I manage a meadow for and um, he's planted some in the meadow and it's actually spread a little bit through the meadow not to any massive extent but it's a really lovely addition to the meadow itself so a really good plant and one tip I would say is if you are looking to encourage insects into your garden between June and November um, obviously choose this plant but also keep it well watered if you can because as with most plants the more water they have the more nectar they can provide equally the less it rains and we've had so little rain here in the last couple of months it's almost unheard of really but we've had very 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 little rain here for the last few months here in the UK so the less rain there is the less nectar these plants can produce so I would recommend watering them through the summer and then they will be more appealing they'll have more of a nectar well if you like for the insects that are visiting them so some of the butterflies that I have counted visiting these plants for those that are interested are things such as gatekeeper ringlet meadow brown small skipper large skipper um, small white green vein white large white red admiral small tortoiseshell uh, painted lady peacock uh, brimstone um, that's 13 off the top of my head <laughs> i can't remember which ones i've said now but so they really are brilliant and i cannot recommend them highly enough so Yes, if you haven't thought about getting some in your garden, I strongly recommend Verbena bonariensis. Obviously, for all the other wildflowers, we aren't selling this on the online shop at the moment. I'm working on it. So for those of you that are keeping an eye on the Wild Your Garden online shop, do keep an eye on the channel. We have hopefully some more additions coming soon in the way of herbaceous perennials, which I'd love to be able to offer you guys in the UK. They are such an addition to any garden, in my opinion. Um, but keep your eye on the channel and there are obviously a lot of wildflower seeds potted plants plugs pond plants pond liner all that sort of stuff so do check out wildgarden.com if you haven't already for lots of other goodies now i could stand here and watch these butterflies all day but sadly i've got to go and see a client so i hope you've enjoyed the video guys please feel free to stick around and if you haven't i'm actually in the garden of my good friend stephen moss where i've just made a wildlife pond for him so down here in somerset so if you haven't seen it already do check out the interview i did with him which i'll put a link to at the end of this video and also the wildlife pond which i'll be uploading shortly if it's not already on the channel depending on when this goes out um, i filmed the entire process of making a wildlife pond for him which is just behind the camera and has already within 24 hours, 24 hours had common data um, egg laying in it common data dragonflies egg laying in the margins of the pond and we now have a pond skater who's resident so absolutely brilliant i don't need to sing the praises of wild, wildlife ponds <laughs> i'm sure you guys watching the channel will absolutely know um, and thanks for the support guys a message as well that you know huge thank you to you all i'm sorry i've not been posting as many videos as i normally have been it's been an absolutely manic summer so far i was in dorset last week somerset this week and now now i've got three weeks coming up in derbyshire so all over the place but don't worry i've been filming everything that i've been creating this year so there'll be lots of new lots of new content coming up for you guys in the coming months so stay tuned feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already give the video a like and i'll be sure to bring you many more videos on all the ways in which you can help wildlife in videos to come thanks for watching i'll see you soon Thank you.